Data centers that contain either hot or cold aisles have seen significant efficiency gains. But which strategy is best for you? Join 42U as we discuss hot and cold aisle containment strategies in this webinar replay. We have published the first eight minutes of our containment webinar here on YouTube. To view the entire presentation, simply visit 42U.com and click the webinar replay icon on the homepage. Thank you everyone on the phone for taking time from your day to join us. I'm Justin Blumling and I'm a product manager here at 42U. Uh, as we said, I'm here with Steve Lewis, who is our director of sales. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining. And today our objective will be to introduce and explain some of the available containment solutions in the marketplace. Uh, containment is a simple and intriguing concept to bring to the data center. Uh, when we talk about raised floors, hot aisle, cold aisle, and perimeter cooling units, they of course have been around a long time, and it's only within the last few years that containment has received uh, widespread attention. So with that said, we're eager to discuss it with you today. Here is our agenda. As you can see, it's straightforward. We'll discuss some common basic airflow management strategies. We'll tackle both cold aisle and hot aisle containment, uh, including some of the considerations for deploying both. Uh, then we'll present a brief containment case study where 42U provided the turnkey service of specifying selling and supporting the containment solution. And finally, we encourage uh, your comments and participation, so we'll conclude with some questions and answers from those of you in the audience. So again, thank you for attending. We really appreciate your time and attention. And with that, we will jump into the meat of the presentation. Uh, this quote comes from a great New York Times article on data centers that was published in June of this year. And as we can see, it says, data centers worldwide now consume more energy annually than Sweden. And for those of us who work in this space, there's no shortage of conversations about data centers and energy. As pro many of us probably know, you can't go to a data center event or trade show without hearing about green data centers or data center efficiency. And most of us have heard repeatedly about the EPA's report, which is really the driver for a lot of this efficiency discussion. Um, the EPA's report stated that consumption in U.S. data centers is in the billions of kilowatt hours and cost is in the billions of dollars. And so when we talk about data centers and energy together, uh, we're speaking in very large numbers. And when you speak in big numbers, people tend to pay attention. And in this case, they certainly have. So why are data centers power hungry? First, I think we need to say that not all of them are energy hogs, as they have been uh, publicized in the blogs and the media when they write about uh, data centers. But if we have to try to articulate answers to a complex question of why does the data center use so much energy, I think we can look at a couple of areas. Uh, we can look at server utilization. It was uh, recently announced uh, by the Uptime Institute that they estimate in typical deployments, 30% uh, may be comatose. So they may be online, they may be consuming power, but they may not be doing a, a lot of useful work. Uh, with mission, critical, mission criticality, excuse me, a, a very pertinent data center buzzword and topic, uh, there can be over-provisioning. There can be more moving parts than necessary uh, to run the business from an IT side because, of course, those services and applications are so mission critical. And uh, on the ownership side of things, you have two dissimilar groups uh, in larger data centers, the IT and the facilities groups, uh, who may talk, who may not talk, who may be compensated differently, who may have different objectives. And uh, really, you need to have both of those groups aligned in an efficiency program, in an efficiency program to really uh, see some results. They, they both play very uh, integral roles in an efficiency program. And I think finally, we have to consider a density and demand. Uh, the Gartner slide to the right-hand slide, uh, the Gartner uh, picture, excuse me, to the right of the slide shows where a fully loaded, fully loaded rack is headed and how that rack load has progressed uh, from 2000 through 2009. Um, they're estimating that this current year, 2009, that a rack of rabid blades, as they call it, uh, could hit about 40 kW. And granted, this is not the case for every server environment, but I think the important thing to note here is that it's possible. And Steve, I was wondering if you would tell us a little bit about what you and your team have seen in the field uh, regarding rack densities uh, in this uh, current age. Definitely, Justin. Yeah, I think there are many folks out there, probably many of the folks who are on the phone here, that they see this type of information and they tend to question its validity. It's almost becoming sensationalized to an extent. You see these numbers portrayed or, or published uh, on industry websites and publications and things, and it's really not pertinent to all facilities, as you mentioned earlier. But we do have several clients that are moving to extremely high-density environments, and the impetus for this typically is due to real estate limitations 
and then the newer server technology. So we've got our clients who are interfacing directly with the HPs and IBMs of the world, and uh, as I'll probably repeat myself over and over again, they tend to make things smaller, faster, and stronger. So they're compacting their, their footprint, putting more processing power into a smaller enclosure, and the, the people tend to try to put as much into a rack as they possibly can because of the space limitations. And so as you do that, your heat loads or your, your cooling requirements in a given rack, they increase. Uh, we've got customers that are running 60 amp three phase to server cabinets, customers who are planning for north of 30 kW loads in a given enclosure or in a given uh, server rack. And we've got customers that are deploying liquid cooling at the rack. So it's either water or refrigerant based closed loop systems that are very progressive and very efficient in handling these types of loads. We've seen these types of installations in a range of markets. Uh, we've seen a lot in the research departments at institutes of higher learning to healthcare all the way down to uh, smaller city governments uh, in, in rural places. It is, in fact, the way the industry is headed. Uh, there is some, there's, it's gaining a lot of traction and spreading across lots of, lots of industries. Um, and, and these are pretty uh, interesting power and cooling demands and challenges that, that come to the data center and the data center manager, but there are other external factors weighing on our clients. Uh, you're absolutely right, Steve. Uh, no one uh, on this call right now and no one in this room is immune to uh, really what's happening in the, in the global economy. Uh, the right-hand side of this chart shows you how the current economic climate uh, relates to data centers. Uh, in the upper right-hand side, server shipments in Q1 of 2009 uh, were down significantly year over year. In the lower right-hand quadrant, uh, we see a number of data center operators, or at least those who participated in this study, uh, have seen their budget cuts or may have had uh, capital projects postponed or canceled altogether. Now, if projects are delayed, uh, we may have to make a legacy facility which might not be designed for uh, the type of loads that you talked about and that some of our customers are experiencing. Uh, we may have to make those facilities last longer. And on top of that, with all the focus on energy efficiency and green data centers and all the buzzwords in terms that surround that context, we may face scrutiny from uh, internal and external ent entities encouraging us to be more green. So all of this happens at the periphery of the data center, and that's represented here on the chart. But uh, central to the data center, uh, internal to it, two areas always remain sacred, availability and performance. And here uh, we encourage, it, on those topics, we encourage our clients to proactively focus on what they can control. Uh, we cannot curb the global recession individually, and uh, budget cuts are typically handed down from above, so we have to work with those constraints. But on the left-hand side, as we've noted here and highlighted in red, there are areas that we can control. If an expansion has been delayed, uh, there are steps that uh, we can take to prolong the useful lives, useful lives of our facilities, and we can also tackle some efficiency goals at the same time. We hope you have enjoyed the webinar so far. If you'd like to view the rest, please visit 42.com and click the webinar replay icon on the homepage.